back on the job. Mayor Rob Ford goes from rehab to City Hall. We look at the state of the race to be Toronto's next mayor. Also, why this elevated expressway is such a hot Toronto election issue. I'm Afan Choudhury. Welcome to Globe Now. The volume on the Rob Ford story is about to go way up. It's been relatively quiet because Toronto's mayor has been on a leave of absence since late April. Well, he returns to City Hall Monday afternoon. And lots of outstanding questions about what sent him into rehab in the first place and what his return means for the Toronto election campaign. Well, joining us now is Globe columnist Marcus G. Welcome, Marcus. If Rob Ford can show that he is healthy, that he has addressed, you know, some of the problems that sent him into rehab, I mean, that could really resonate with voters, couldn't it? He's certainly hoping so. He's going to come back and try to prove that he's back in the game, that he's fit and he's clean and sober. Uh, apparently, he's lost a lot of weight and so on. So the narrative he'll be, uh, he'll be, he'll be putting forward is that uh, all this is in the past, all these troubles, and I'm ready to run for office again. And how could that change the dynamic of the election campaign? Well, I think uh, the other candidates will start focusing on him. They were focusing very much so, John Tory and Olivia Chow in particular, on each other, battering away at each other. Now, even now, uh, in the hours before his appearance, they're, they're going after Rob Ford, and particularly for Mr. Tory, who sees a potential uh, uh, co conflict on the right hand of the spectrum. This is important. So, you know, between John Tory and Olivia Chow, who will be happiest to see Rob Ford back on the election campaign? Well, I think Olivia Chow, definitely, mm -hmm. because she, uh, th there's actually a different position between the two of them on the issue of uh, Rob Ford resigning. Tory said he should resign right away. Mm -hmm. Olivia Chow says it's up to the voters and we should wait till election day. It's to her advantage for him to stay in the race because it potentially splits the right hand, right side of the spectrum. I mean, what is Mayor Rob Ford planning on doing at City Hall? Well, actually, his powers are very much diminished. Uh, remember, uh, City Council took away most of his powers way back in November, and he's been on rehab and gave up the remainder of his powers for those two, two months. So he's only getting back that small proportion of his powers that he retained. The other thing is there's only four months left until the election. Mm. Very little actual city business is being done in this time. So he's really just back to campaign. I mean, what do you think is the single most important question that he should address? Well, I think there's a, uh, there's a question of his associations. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you uh, 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 say that uh, this was only personal failing of his and he has addiction problems, we should sympathize with that. There's a whole issue of his associating with these criminal elements. There's a whole issue as well of his uh, homophobic and sexist and racist comments, mm -hmm. which he, which you know, not everybody when they're impaired uh, says that sort of thing. So he has to explain himself. Uh, about that as well, I think. Interesting. Well, thank you so much, Marcus. Well, tell us what you think about Rob Ford's return to Toronto City Hall. What would convince you that he should get a second shot at mayor? Tweet us at Globe Now. Stay with us up next. Why one Toronto expressway is stirring up so much election debate. For anyone who commutes to Toronto, the Gardner Expressway is a fact of life. Sometimes a painful experience because of the pace of traffic. It's not exactly in the best shape either. So in the lead up to the October election, Toronto residents will have to weigh which candidate and which vision for the future of the Gardner they want to back. This is a story about an expressway. Once upon a time, the people of Toronto undertook a momentous task to erect an expressway across the southern edge of the city. And so, in the late 1950s and early 60s, one of Toronto's most important pieces of transportation infrastructure came into being. The Gardner Expressway, known simply as the Gardner. Unfortunately, the expressway has seen better days. It's crumbling. Everyone agrees something needs to be done, but no one can agree on what. In search of a solution, Waterfront Toronto and the City of Toronto conducted an environmental assessment to help determine the future of the road. Four options were offered up. Maintain, improve, replace, or remove. The option to remove scored highest in the environmental assessment, but the cost? $330 million, not to mention the 30 minutes that would be added to commuters' trips. The alternative? to continue repairing the expressway at an initial cost of $215 million, plus another $130 million in the long term. 
Mayor Rob Ford is firmly against tearing down the expressway and would rather it be preserved. And he's not alone. Mayoral candidate David Sucknacki also suggests maintaining the eastern stretch of the Gardner until funded public transit is available in the area. The other mayoral candidates are backing a hybrid proposal. John Tory, Karen Stintz, and Olivia Chow want to reconfigure the Eastern Gardner Expressway rather than tear it down. The Gardner's fate won't be decided until after the municipal election in the fall. Well, that's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. Which vision of the Gardner Expressway's future do you support? And if there's an urban transit solution that Toronto ought to consider, perhaps something that's been tried in your city, we want to hear from you. Tweet us at Globe Now. I'm Afan Chaudhry. Thanks for watching.